Please let her go. I need my baby. How well known are your neighbors to you? If they committed a heinous crime, would you be shocked? The residents of this small Californian town had no idea that someone so close to them would be responsible for one of their own disappearances. Pendable neighbor was the offender at a nearby church. She oversaw Sunday school. In addition to being a mother, she came from a pastor's family. Nobody ever could have believed that a cold, hearted monster capable of doing terrible things to someone so helpless lay beneath that kind and outwardly caring persona. Maria Chavez and Daniel Cantu welcomed a daughter, Sandra Renee. On March 8, 2001, she shared a caravan park in Tracy, California with her mother, grandmother, and three elder siblings. She enjoyed playing with friends and always pitching in around the neighborhood. But then things became dark. Activate March 27, 2009. Sandra had just gotten home from school when she asked her mother if she may go outside and play because she was such an incredibly spirited child. Her mother concurred. She then skipped and grinned as she left the house and went door to door, calling on all of her friends. Her mother last saw her alive at that point. Sandra ought to have been at home by this point because it was almost 8 p.m. Well, she didn't come home for dinner or she didn't call me. Ago Maria was beginning to worry. She asked if anyone had seen Sandra when she contacted all of her friends, but no one had in hours. Sandra was nowhere to be seen when Maria started seeking for her around the neighborhood. Maria was now in a complete panic. She phoned the police out of fear that her daughter had suffered a terrible injury. When the police showed up, they conducted a thorough search of the area and spoke with every resident of the caravan park, but nobody knew Sandra's potential whereabouts. Fortunately, a security camera outside Sandra's house caught her final seconds before she vanished. Sandra can be seen in the video skipping around the street as she walks home, but she soon changes lanes and disappears from view. A neighbor's automobile travels by going the other way eight minutes later. The next day, a massive search was conducted around town with everyone coming in to help. They brought in a helicopter, dogs unit, police on horses, all-terrain vehicles, and anything that could assist in locating the missing girl. They even brought in divers to search in the nearby river. This video is sponsored by Zebec TriScreen. Click the link in the description to get $25 off your purchase. This video you're watching right now was actually made using the TriScreen. Boost your productivity by 44%. Works on almost any laptop. Extremely compact and portable. Remarkably lightweight. Set up in under 15 seconds. Hit the link to get $25 off your order. They found nothing. Seemed like Sandra had just vanished into thin air. As the hours passed, the situation would become even more desperate. The investigators wanted to reach as many people as possible. They shared Sandra's information with national news media and even offered a reward of $20,000 to anyone who knew anything about her whereabouts. Additionally, the FBI was brought in and Roblox Re was scattered all over the place. This is when Maria got a text that seemed a little odd and suspicious. Informed the police that I had a theft at 4 p.m. today. I'm not sure whether or not that matters. Melissa Huckabee, one of their neighbors, sent the text. She taught Sunday school at a nearby church and was the mother of a friend of Sandra's. Although it seemed strange at the time, Melissa speculated that Sandra's disappearance might be related to her stolen bag. Nevertheless, the police discounted this theory and kept looking in a different direction. A was made by the FBI, a white male between the ages of 25 and 40 who has a criminal record involving minors. Surprisingly, the investigator focused on one man even though there were several people in the area who matched this description. The cops discovered that Sandra was kissed on the lips by this ominous man two years prior. They took the man in for interrogation after spotting one but were unable to establish any evidence connecting him to Sandra's disappearance. The cops decided to keep an eye on him because everything about this person was just wrong. In the meantime, Sandra's family gathered for prayer vigils by candlelight, and something very strange occurred during one of these occasions. Everyone had gathered to show the family their support when they suddenly broke the silence. A woman in convulsions burst in screaming and weeping she took a note she found on the ground to the police who had also been present at the event and hauled them outside on batchy road and white hill road Cantu was pushed into the sea while inside a stolen luggage when you're hunting for a missing female and things weren't adding up to begin with you witnessed quite a scary message had some clear misspelling which appeared intentional as thought the writer knew what they were doing how can someone misspell on with a double n this seemed totally suspicious and even more so when the person who had found the note was the same one who had reported a stolen suitcase. Melissa Huckabee. This seemed like too much of a coincidence for one person, and the police thought so too. Up until this point, 
The police had no reason to suspect Melissa. She was a mom and a Sunday school teacher. Why would she hurt someone her own daughter was friends with? She just didn't fit the profile. But, she seemed to be right in the middle of everything. At first, they had thought she was just an attention seeker, but they soon realized there was more to it. Melissa had a mental health history. Schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and borderline personality disorder were all listed as her diagnoses. The police believed Melissa might have written the note to her despite the fact that she had previously had a few minor run. However, without any fresh information regarding Sandra's whereabouts, even though they were unable to express it out, everyone knew they were seeking for a body even though they were still looking. Then one day the police received the call. They had been drowning. A farm worker from a local irrigation farm found a suitcase where they were draining the ponds. Even before they got there, the police knew what was inside and they were right. The police then took that bag from the pond and transported the bag to the county morgue where this evening police identified the body of Sandra Cantu. The autopsy report showed that she had been beat and with a foreign object before being to death. They also found traces of Xanax in her system. This was a big blow to the family who had still been harboring some hope of finding Sandra alive. But the police already had a suspect in mind. They were aware that Sandra's remains were in the black suitcase. Melissa had written a note indicating where to find it, and it belonged to her. The police discovered Sandra was approaching Melissa's house when they reviewed the security tape, and eight minutes later Melissa's SUV had left. She had admitted to going to church around 5 p.m. when speaking to the police, and arrived home around 6, 30 p.m. The police discovered evidence during their search of the church that supported their suspicion a twisted handle, reddish, brown smear, and metal rolling pin. Sandra's DNA was found on the rolling pin. Then, between five and six, a couple came forward and told the police they had seen Melissa at the pond. They claimed that Sandra appeared hurried and disoriented on the day that she vanished, but she claimed to have gone to the lavatory. When the detectives arrived at Melissa's home, they couldn't find her, despite having enough evidence to make an arrest presently. After Melissa tried to take something by swallowing it sharply, they discovered that she was in the hospital. They surmised that she had done it to escape the repercussions of her actions. But after being discharged, she drove herself to the police station where she was detained and accused of killing Sandra. She told the cops an absolutely incredible account of what happened and said it was all an accident. She claimed that while playing hide and seek with her daughter, Sandra hid inside the suitcase. Melissa continued with her evening routine without realizing there was a child in the bag. She claims that when she later discovered Sandra had already passed away from a lack of air, she panicked and dumped. This was a total lie and the police already had evidence that told a different story. Investigators developed a terrifying explanation for what transpired. Melissa had tricked Sandra into going with her to the church. When they got there, she'd given the girl a drink and when Sandra was knocked out, she tid her before smothering her. Even worse, there was proof Melissa had plotted this. The defense sought the death penalty in this case. But Melissa entered into a plea agreement and was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. She apologized to Sandra's parents for taking Sandra away and said she didn't know why she did it. You took the life of an innocent little girl and she's not even old enough to decide to eat ice cream yet. Sandra left a huge gap in the hearts of everyone who knew her. This concludes the video for today. What do you make of this situation? Why do you believe Melissa committed such a horrible act? Should she have been put to death? Please share thoughts in the comment area. Thank you for for watching the videos and if you like them please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up